evening and welcome to Central 66th Commencement Exercises. I also want to welcome those of you who are watching us from home online. At this time, we will be led in our opening prayer by our salutatorian, Edward Stewart. Please remain standing for prayer. Praise the Lord, everyone. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go before the throne of grace this evening, amen, to give God honor for all that he has done for us, amen? amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Father God, we come before you this evening, humble in heart, humble in spirit, O oh Heavenly Father, giving you thanks, giving you praise, and giving you glory for all that you have done in each and every one of our lives, dear Lord. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for the faculty here, dear Lord God. We thank you for the students here. We thank you for all of the family and, and friends that made it out, dear Lord God, that you got them here safely, O oh Heavenly Father. And I pray, O oh Lord God, that they return safely as well, dear Lord. And Father God, I want to thank you for each and every student, dear Lord God, for what you have done in our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you. It is by your grace, God. It is by your mercy, O oh Heavenly Father, that we are here today standing before you with such great honor for you, dear Lord God, and for such great love, Lord, for what you have done in our lives, O Heavenly Father. And Father God, I pray that you continue to do a work in each and every one of us, O Heavenly Father, that we go out, dear Lord God, in the vineyard, dear Lord God, for the harvest, dear Lord God, is plenty and the laborers are few. Will you have them before you this evening, O Heavenly Father? And I'm asking God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you touch each and every one of their hearts, dear Lord God, that they continue in the work that you have called them to do. There's so much work to be done, O Heavenly Father. And you, dear Lord God, has created us to do this. And I just want to give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory for all that you have done, all that you're going to do, and all that you will do. Give them strength, give them courage, dear Lord God. Reassure them, O oh Heavenly Father, that you have their backs when they go out to do that in which you have called them to do. We give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, this is my humble prayer unto you this evening. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for taking the time to be here tonight as we honor and recognize the class of 2023. This will be a wonderful evening of acknowledging God's work and blessings in their lives. I know how excited you are for the moment when your loved one will cross the stage and re receive the degree that has been earned. You've shepherded some of these students through a merger, through COVID-19, quarantine, Zoom classes, rapid testing. We've made it through all that, and tonight we get to celebrate. But first we want to recognize a few people that mean so much to Central. Central's trustees are comprised of leaders from five different states in the Midwest who commit themselves to the mission and success of this institution. And whether or not you've met them before, we have all been blessed by their voluntary leadership, prayer, and sacrificial support of our ministry. Central's outstanding faculty has encouraged, strengthened, and challenged many of you. They've prepared many years in their education and service to teach our students the biblical knowledge, ministry, skills, and worldview understanding necessary to be biblical servants. In addition, many of you have been blessed by our hardworking staff that makes this college function. Regardless of position or responsibility, every employee is essential to Central's mission and vision. So if you're a current trustee, faculty, or staff, would you please stand so we can appreciate you for your sacrificial ministry here. Over 2,000 graduates of Central have been trained here and sent out to serve, and we're always pleased to see them whenever they come back to visit. Uh, tonight, if you are in attendance as a graduate of CCCB, uh, we thank you for being here with us. Also in this room, graduates are moms and dads, 
brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts, uncles, husbands, wives, friends who have been there for you during your college education. And they have given you money, supplies, prayers, and I don't know what else. They've laughed with you, cried with you, lifted you before the Lord, and in many ways they've helped you reach this milestone in your life. And I know you're thankful that they supported you along the way. If you're a family member of one of our graduates, would you please stand this evening? And while they're standing graduates, would you express your gratitude to your family and friends for being here tonight? We're, we're warming up our cheering for the big moments later. Tonight we have several in attendance who financially support the college individually or through their church. Their donations make our tuition scholarships possible. And as recipients of those scholarships, I know tonight's graduate, graduating class is thankful for your generosity in helping them earn their degrees. And I want us to take this opportunity for the graduates and their families to express appreciation to our donors and church leaders who make Central Christian College of the Bible possible. Let's thank them. At this time, Brian Sevitz, uh, one of our worship arts instructors, will lead us in worship, joined by Sandy Fincher, Allie King, and Drew Baxter. Let's honor Christ tonight for bringing us together to celebrate what he has done. Well, if you can, why don't you stand and we're going to uh, do just what he said in his prayer a little bit ago. We're here to honor you guys, but ultimately we're here to honor and glorify Jesus Christ for what he's done. And so let's do that as we lift our voices together this evening. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
God who's never fails when I fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting but the same God who's never late is working all things out he's working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name oh yes I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy
seated. Tonight's distinguished commencement speaker is Dr. Brandon Bradley. Brandon is a 2010 graduate of CCCB where he earned his bachelor's degree here in preaching ministry. Before attending Central, he worked as a surgical technician, but after enrolling, he became a minister and has preached at churches in Missouri, Texas, and Iowa. Along the way, he earned Master of Arts and Master of Divinity degrees from Hope International University in Christian Leadership. In 2018, Brandon returned to Central and became the Dean of Professional Studies. In addition to teaching Bible, ministry, and communication courses, he also created a set of programs that have helped shape tonight's graduating class. These include the Supervised Ministry Experience Program, Saints GPS, and maintaining academic partnerships with four other institutions. During that time, he also completed a Doctor of Ministry degree in Spiritual Formation and Discipleship from Nazarene Theological Seminary. Brandon was deeply involved in the college's Accreditation Reaffirmation Task Force and participated as a member of the academic leadership team. 
Brandon is a licensed chaplain, a published author, a devoted husband, and a proud father. Several months ago, I asked him to be tonight's commencement speaker, and he graciously agreed. He'll be sharing the commencement address to the graduating class after our scripture reading and prayer by this year's valedictorian, Nathan Cleaver. Would you please stand for the reading of God's word? <clears throat> Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to, for all of us to just be sent forward, that we're being sent forward into ministry, into life, be it secular fields, to be ministers there or to be in ministry in the church. Thank you for the professors who have poured into the students. Thank you for the parents, the supporters, financially or emotionally, psychologically, or however you want to put it. All these different people who have poured into us, thank you for them, because it was your plan that put them there. I ask that in the same way that they pass the torch to us, that we will, in the future, be able to pass the torch to many other people who we will influence for the gr greater glory of God. In Christ's name, amen. I know that I'm supposed to, uh, you know, in an official capacity, something like this, I'm supposed to uh, greet the president and the uh, executive team and the faculty and the alumni and the board and all that. I'm not that formal. Besides, I need the reminder. And we all need the reminder. So we'll try it again, but this time I'll, I'll explain so everybody can take part. Everybody has a favorite something. Favorite car. I've got one. Ford Mustang 65. Favorite flavor of ice cream. You know, you got one. You can admit it. Mine is all of them. <laughs> but I have a favorite word. And this word is so special that God used it sparingly in His Word. It only appears in the Bible three times. Twice in the Old Testament, and once in the New. It's Isaiah chapter 7 and 8, and Matthew chapter 1. You're welcome, there was no test. <laughs> but the word is Emmanuel, and it means God with us. And here's why this is such a beautiful word. It captures God's heartbeat and the theme of every chapter of Scripture from Genesis 1 all the way to the close of Revelation because He created everything to be with us. And then when we mess it up, He puts in place the most glorious, wonderful plan, the plan that gives us all hope and brings it to fruition. He even gives us the roadmap of what it's going to look like when all that prophetic word comes to pass at the close of the book. Every verse, every chapter committed to the meaning of one word. So together, let's do this one more time. Emmanuel! God with us. Remember that. There will be a test later. Man, this is a huge blessing. <sighs> to be up here and to be able to speak to this class... To see so many friends, family, it's deeply blessing. I want you to know that God's presence in my life has been manifest through you. So I want to thank you for that. To the staff here at CCCB, that goes for you double. And to the faculty, 
at least triple. You all have blessed me so much. It's been such a privilege to serve. Starting in 2014 as an online professor, and then since 2018 here on campus. And I'm thankful I'll get to continue to teach online moving forward. Of course, it even goes back to when I was a student. But I remember when I was sitting in these chairs where you are and, and thinking about the faculty and the things that they talk about and the things that, that it must be like when they get together. And so I, I want you to understand that we have some very godly men and women who just, they set the example of God's presence, and they have in my life. But every once in a while, they also show how human they are. Yeah. They were helping me process what I should share today. At lunch, believe it or not. They took me out to lunch, and that was a, a nice blessing. And there were some of the things that were shared. It were some things about, you know, be, be kind to the audience. You know, don't let this last too terribly long. Speak proportionate to your height. <laughs> so I did some arithmetic, which takes a little bit of time because, you know, I'm, I'm a Bible college graduate, so, yeah. I'm five foot five. That's 65 inches. So if we've got an inch a minute, how long do we have? We're about oh, we're about to. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I don't think so. The others reminded me of what the duty was of the speaker. And that I was supposed to say something encouraging and not simply come up on stage and pop a squat. I had to look that one up. I'm not going to define it for you. You're welcome. Enough about me. My goodness. I'm, I'm just thinking about this graduating class and the things that you went through to get here. I mean, just think about some of the things that, that you all went through, that we all went through. I mean, COVID still gets mentioned on the newscast almost weekly, if not daily. And all of you, in some way, shape, or form, passed through that to get to this point. Literally, the world was turned upside down while you were studying, and somehow you had to figure out a way to get here. That's a struggle. For some of you, there were probably personal issues, personal needs, family dynamics, struggles that, that go well beyond a classroom environment, as if we need challenges for what the educational process already requires. For some of you, love was found, which comes with its own challenges. Some of you may have lost a loved one. The road goes up and down. And so with that in mind, you should really be blessed to be here. And I know that you are. But I want to tell you how proud I am of you. And I started to think, what... What passage of scripture could, could encourage this class and the rest of us? And I just happened to be reading through Romans chapter 5 and came to these words. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, we also glory in our sufferings. Hmm. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That first part about suffering. I don't like that. I don't. But I don't think there's a person in this room who's been spared from it. 
We've all experienced pain, suffering, struggle, trouble. But you know what Paul's saying here? That is not something that God's going to let go to waste. Your struggle, whatever it is, whatever your pain, whatever trouble you have faced getting to this point, is something that God wants to use. He, he creates a cycle, and this, this passage has a cycle of how God uses it. Well, first it mentions trouble. And that trouble provides an opportunity for us to, to develop perseverance, to press on, to get through. God uses it to shape our character, to form us more like the character of Jesus Christ. And in the process develops hope. If we were to walk through Paul's life, we would see this time and time again. And that's why this subject of, of trouble giving opportunity for perseverance and character development and the hope of Christ comes through in every letter he penned. But it's not just Paul. You know, we can go through incredible number of scriptures and we see this over and over again but there are several that I want to focus on today and if I'm going to fill 65 minutes I'm going to need to take some time on each one <laughs> the first one is a story about 12 stones it happens in the uh, book of Joshua but you really need to know the background and most of you probably know some of this story. The Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. God raises up a man to lead them to freedom. His name was Moses. After they were freed from slavery, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. An entire generation of them die, and they're all traveling to the promised land, looking forward to the day that they would get there. At the, end of, at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses dies. The book of Joshua begins with God coming to Joshua and saying, hey, your mentor's dead. Guess what? The one thing he failed to do, get the people to the promised land, that's your job. Congratulations. Time to step up, buddy. You got this. But he said, be strong and courageous, for I am with you. If that's not Emmanuel, I don't know what is. Fast forward a little bit, and we got them going through the promised land. And God, in almost a reenactment of the crossing of the Red Sea, he stops the flow of the Jordan River. And he gives some instructions to Joshua. We find them in Joshua 4.4. 4. As they're crossing the river, this is what God says to Joshua. Well, this is what Joshua hears. So Joshua called together 12 men and had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and he said to them, these were his instructions from God, go over before the ark of the Lord, your, your God, into the middle of the Jordan, and each one of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites. For those of you who aren't just graduating, that's 12. You know, to serve as a sign among you goes on, in the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark, before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. These are a people who knew trouble. They understood slavery, they understood what it was to be nomads in a land that was not their own, and they understood what it was to suffer. They knew trouble, but they were persevering. And through that process, God was shaping their character every step of the way and gave them the hope of this promised land. Those 12 stones stood as a memorial to help them to remember the hope that they have in God's presence. 
so that they could continue to do what they were called to do. And that was to cleanse the land. That was going to be trouble. That was going to require perseverance. That was going to require godly character. So they desperately needed hope. Now I want to talk about one stone. It's got a great name. Ebenezer. You see, one of my favorite books of the Bible is in 1 Samuel. In 1 Samuel, God, God is having a revival among his people. And he's reminding them of his presence. And they repent and turn back to him. God delivers them from the Philistines who are surrounding them. But Samuel, the priest and the prophet, says in chapter 7, verse 12, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin, and he named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. The people of Israel had backslid. They had lost sight of what it was to live in a relationship with him. They understood trouble once again. But through that trouble, they chose to persevere, looking forward to God and his presence among them. And God shaped their character and gave them once again the hope of who they were as his chosen people. Set apart for his good purpose. They were a discouraged people until they were reminded of their hope. Now I want to talk about some different stones, some rolling stones. No, not those rolling stones. Some people who had lost hope, who were very dear to Jesus, are mentioned in John chapter 11. His dear friends Mary and Martha whose brother Lazarus had died. Jesus took his time getting there. He knew that Lazarus was dead. But he knew what he was doing too. He shows up, he reminds Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. But they were confused. They were thinking about something way in the future. Jesus wept with them. But then, in verse 38 of John 11 says this, Jesus, once more deeply moved, he came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Now, in that day and age, you didn't do that. They didn't embalm anybody. And that's why Mary comes up to him and says, Jesus, it's been four days. It's going to stink. You know, I don't know if you've ever smelled rotting flesh. It's, it's rancid. And they didn't have the ability to get that. It, nobody was going to eat for a week. That's how bad it was going to be. But Jesus just said, no, no, no. We've got to do this. We've got to roll away the stone. He was kind of saying, just step back and watch. I got this. When they did. They saw the truth of that statement, I am the resurrection and the life. His presence brought hope. But first they experienced trouble. That trouble led them to persevere. They reached out to Jesus, come quickly. Their character knew to depend on Jesus, but they couldn't see how the resurrection and the life was going to work. But when the author of life shows up, death flees. And he said, roll away the stone. Trouble, perseverance, character, and hope. But there's one more stone that we got to talk about. Join me in Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought, bought, spice, blah, excuse me, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. 
And they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting at the right side. And they were alarmed. Don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead to, of you in Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Who's going to roll away the stone? They had been experiencing trouble like nobody could ever believe before. They had seen the hope of glory crucified on a cross, and he died. They wept at his feet. They were there when he was pulled down lifeless. They knew what it was to have no hope. They knew trouble beyond trouble's existence. But they persevered. They wanted to minister to him even in death. They weren't even sure how they were going to do it. How are we going to roll away the stone? You see the character in them. The desire to serve their king. How are we going to get to him? But the stone was already rolled away. And then they were commissioned to be messengers of hope. Now, i got to stop there for a second. In our movement, we have a tendency to look at Acts chapter 2 as the first gospel sermon. Because Peter preached it. But the truth is, the first time that the message of the risen Christ was given to a human being, it was given to this group of women. And they were commissioned to go to the disciples and declare to them that Jesus is alive. So women, that you here are graduating, remember that. And men, remember it twice as much. They knew trouble, but they knew perseverance. They knew character. Their character was shaped, and they were given hope. Each one of you, in the course of your ministry, in the course of your career, in the course of your marriage, in the course of your life, you're going to face trouble. Jesus promised that. And if we're going to be disciples, that means we're going to become like our rabbi. Newsflash. They killed him. Martyrdom is not off the table. Now, I don't want to dissuade you. Because we've got a hope that's bigger than any of that trouble. And he's given us that hope so that we will persevere as he did. So that we will have character shaped like Christ. So that we will experience all of that hope. 1 Peter 1.3 tells us that we have a living hope in Jesus Christ through his resurrection. He literally died to give you that hope. There are going to be times in ministry where you're going to need that reminder. Trust me, that's why I am always saying, Emmanuel! Because I need the reminder. Because ministry is hard. And so I want to give you a gift. Some of you probably were sitting down and you saw one of these. Now, students, I am not arming you. <laughs> and I want to remind you that behind you and in front of you are faculty and they are armed as well. <laughs> but we're not, these aren't that kind of weapon. It is a weapon, but it's a weapon of hope. Do you notice what those stones were for that came from the Jordan River and that were set up by Samuel? They were memorial stones 
to remember all that God had done to get them to that point. Thus far, God has been with us. That's your stone to remember today. Yeah, you're going to have a diploma. Yeah, you're going to have it. But you're also going to have the memory of this crazy guy who went on for 65 minutes talking about rocks and how they exhibited hope. But you're also going to remember that when ministry seems impossible, and ministry will, Sometimes just the timing of it will seem impossible. One of the best things that anybody ever taught me about ministry was from Dr. Pelfrey. And he said, ministry never happens at a good time. And it's true. You're going to face a need to sacrifice things you want to do in order to be Christ for somebody. To just be the representation of Christ for somebody. To be the representation of the hope of Christ. For somebody. And I want this rock to remind you of that. And there are going to be times where you're not going to know how this is going to work. You're not going to know how you're going to be able to do whatever it is God puts in front of you. You're going to walk through like the fire of hell. And yet, that promise, I am with you, Emmanuel, is there. You say, Lord, how am I going to how am I going to roll this stone? But for over two thousand years, our God has been in the business of rolling stones. So, if you need hope, and we all need hope, and the people you serve need hope. The people you serve need hope. You remind them, Emmanuel. That was weak. Come on. You remind them, Emmanuel. Amen. And when God is with us, that means his presence is with us. And where he is present, there is hope. Thank you, Brandon, for the journey through key moments where God showed up in ways and reminded his people and us today that we have a hope. Appreciate that journey through the word and reminder for all of us. In the middle of your program, you're going to find listed members of the class of 2023 uh, you'll notice there's a few that don't uh, have photos. We left enough space there that your kids can draw in faces if they want to. Or <laughs> if, if you'd like to uh, take a selfie later and take it to Walgreens, you can paste your own picture in there. Or however you want to do that. But we're glad to have that there for you. And there are also some special awards that are listed in the front of the program. I want to take a few moments to call your attention to the senior awards section that you'll find on the inside cover. This morning, uh, those individuals were recognized in our annual honors chapel. I'm going to tell you about these awards. Please hold your applause until all of these have been mentioned. I'll start at the bottom of the page and work up. The cum laude honorees are recognized for maintaining a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or above. Two are listed there. The magna cum laude honorees earned a cumulative GPA of 3.75 and above. Two of them are listed. And the summa cum laude honorees generated a cumulative GPA of 3.90 or above, and three of them are listed. When you see the graduates walk across the stage tonight, you'll notice some of them are wearing yellow cords, and those are part of the highlights of their accomplishments as if they were receiving one of those honors. The faculty elected two graduates this year to the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society of the Association for Biblical Higher Education, and those qualifications include at least a 3.3 cumulative GPA, the demonstration of Christian character during their educational experience here, and demonstrated leadership ability. You'll see two people mentioned there who will also be wearing cords as they walk across the stage. Again this year, the central community recommended and selected a female and male graduate who best embodied servant leadership to the rest of the campus. Those two recipients 
This morning we're given an embroidered towel to recognize their servants' hearts and humility in serving others. Each year the faculty select several seniors to speak in chapel and under the leadership of Dr. Billy Strother they develop a series of sermons that they share with the campus community. At the end of the semester, the faculty selected the top order from the six who spoke. This year's class order, Matthew Blackmore, spoke at the end of this morning's Honors Chapel, and he'll give our benediction at the end of the service and will be wearing a medal as he crosses the stage. The salutatorian honor is given to the graduating senior who completed at least 90 hours of credit and has the second highest cumulative GPA. That's Edward Stewart. You heard him pray for us earlier, and I'll have to start saying, when Edward Stewart prays for you, you know you've been prayed for. <laughs> the valedictorian honor is awarded to the graduating senior who completed at least 90 hours of credit at Central with the highest cumulative GPA. That's Nathan Cleaver, and those two honorees will be wearing special medals as well. Would all those award recipients who are mentioned in the senior awards please stand? We're going to recognize them together. You may be seated. At this time, we will have our graduates presented by our Vice President of Academics, Sean Lindsay, and our VP of Student Development, Daryl Ammon. Would the candidates for graduation of the Master of Arts degree please rise and approach the stage? At this time, uh, Mr. Lindsley, Dr. Stevens, and Dr. Struther will confer Central's graduating class of Master of Arts students. The Master of Arts in Ministry Leadership is a 36 credit program focusing on leadership in the local church or church-related organization. It is composed of on-campus, online, and on-site students, classes, I'm sorry, with a very practical emphasis and hands-on approach toward equipping people for ministry. As these graduates cross the stage, they're conferred a degree and then they'll be hooded over here to represent having received the Master of Arts. There are several candidates who were not able to be here and you will see their names listed in absentia on the program above behind me. Would Patrick Gould please prove? Patrick will be taking time to reconnect with God and his family. He will use the experiences and wisdom from school to continue to make disciples in Warren County. James Gregory Hereford. After several, yeah, you can clap, it's okay. After several years of mission work, followed by eight years of bivocational preaching ministry, Greg became, began a full-time ministry in January 2023. He is currently serving as a lead pastor at First Christian Church in his hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> Benjamin Jones. Ben will continue as pastor of Shell Creek Baptist Church in Columbus, Nebraska. Charles Lingerfeld. Charles will continue to love his family and serve God in his local church. Ronald McPherson. Ronald plans to continue the ministry God has placed him in as pastor of Edinburgh Baptist Church. Brandy Miles.
Brandy plans to continue at Berean Christian Church as the next generation minister and to continually learn more about God and who he is. <laughs> Jeremiah Ratliff. <laughs> Jeremiah plans to settle down in the central Illinois area with his beloved wife, Caitlin, and enjoy the fruits of their labor with friends and loved ones. <laughs> Bobby Shaper Cutter. Bobby is currently pursuing her D-Men at Talbot Seminary at Biola University. She will continue working at Capital City Christian Church and continue on as president of Inspire. She also plans to continue her writing and speaking ministry. Camden Trumbull. Trumbull. Camden will continue serving as the middle school ministry leader at Cherry Hills Church and learning to be a new Shaw father to a one-month-old baby. I saw him struggling with that a little bit this afternoon. Look at this. Sherry Wallace. Jerry, thank the good Lord, continues to continue working at CCCB and having more free time to spend with her husband and children. Will all the graduates who will be receiving the bachelor degrees please come forward and make your way to the stage. Next, we will confer 18 Bachelor of Religious Studies degrees. These students have earned a minimum of 60 hours at Central with an emphasis on Christian leadership, missional occupation, or vocational preparation, and an additional 60 to 70 hours through one of our partnership schools. Central currently has partnerships with Moper Leary Community College and Indiana Wesleyan University. The following students have completed all of the requirements for the BRS degree. Matthew Blackmore. <laughs> Matthew plans to return to his hometown and begin ministering at his home church. And his dad's pretty proud about it too. I should tell you that as the graduates cross the stage, you'll be given an opportunity on the far side over there if you'd like to go take a picture uh, with them as they come off. Uh, there will obviously be time after the ceremony as well. Adam Chance. Adam is currently looking for a job within the area of his degree. That's an advertisement. <laughs> he wants to help people in their faith through music. <clears throat> Rashunte Davenport. <clears throat> Rashunte is continuing her role at Westside Missionary Baptist Church as the Kids and Tweens Director. She will let God use her as she has accepted her calling to preach the gospel. Brandon Dean. Brandon's plans after graduation are to continue to preach and teach the gospel 
while working to complete his MDiv degree, all to the glory of God. <laughs> Stephanie Hansel. <laughs> Stephanie is currently enrolled here at Central in the Master of Arts in Ministry Leadership Program. Maurice Holt. <laughs> Maurice is currently seeking a career in Christian counseling and chaplaincy. He plans to pursue a master's degree in the future. Jordan Jackson. Jordan will be continuing to on to graduate school to pursue a Master's of Business Administration with a concentration in marketing. Alexander Jones. <laughs> Alex wants to serve God in the workplace. He is lurking to continue his education in the future. <laughs> Fredika Mitchell. Fredika is currently looking for a job within her area of degree. She plans to use her education to defend and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is also her plan to pursue a foreign language degree in Spanish. <laughs> Edward Stewart. Edward is grateful to God for him being with him throughout his journey and by his grace allowing him to finish strong. All glory to God. He could not have achieved this monumental task in his life without him. All praise and glory to God. <laughs> Christina Sutton. Christina will be continuing and completing the ABCTE program to become an early childhood education teacher. Keiko Whitlock. Keiko intends to pursue her master's degrees in education and be a high school math teacher. Our next group of graduates will be receiving the Bachelor of Science degree. This prepares students for entry level professional employment in a church or parachurch ministry. The degree contains an undergraduate curriculum of 120 credits, including a Bible major and a ministry major. The BS degree typically requires four years of full-time study to graduate. The following 12 students have completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degrees. Drew Baxter. <laughs> Drew has a job he will be starting soon. He wants to start a family with his fiance Lindsay and to continue pursuing ministry and music. <laughs> April Beaverson. <laughs> April, Beaverson. 
April intends to continue working in the mental health inpatient unit at the local hospital until moving to Oklahoma where she will possibly pursue a master's degree in counseling. <laughs> Ty Bustamante. Ty plans to work as a direct support staff in the special needs field around the Columbia, Missouri area, as well as advocating for inclusion and integration of individuals with special needs within the church. <laughs> Brittany Clement. Brittany plans to either work in a funeral home or work alongside her husband in the church. <laughs> You'll have to ask her about that. I'm not sure. Zachariah Clement. Zach is enrolled in a master's in biblical studies program at Ozark College starting this fall. He also wants to continue to preach at Leeton Christian Church and have four kids eventually. <laughs> Maybe that's why Brittany wants to work in a funeral home. <laughs> Sorry. Alicia King. <laughs> Allie will be working at ICANN Missouri where she can help others and use the skills she has learned while getting her Christian counseling degree. <laughs> Trinity Strain. Trinity wishes to pursue a master's at Central Methodist University while working full-time at DFS while living in Moberly, Missouri. Camille Townsend. Camille's graduating with her Bachelor of Science in Christian Counseling. We will now confer our two Bachelor of Arts recipients who have earned not only a minimum of 120 hours composed of biblical studies, professional studies, and general education studies. They have studied within a particular emphasis including biblical studies, Christian counseling, Christian education, Christian ministries, cross-cultural ministry, preaching, preaching ministry, and youth and family ministry. And then within this degree, they've also studied a minimum of 15 hours of biblical languages in either Koine Greek and or biblical Hebrew. The following two students have, have, have completed all the requirements for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Kylie Bourgeois. Kylie will be moving to Columbia, Missouri with her sister where she will pursue a job in a library or related field. Nathan Cleaver. After graduation, Nathan plans to study at the University of Edinburgh to attain a Master of Theology in Biblical Studies. <laughs> Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts degrees please come forward?
There are six students who are receiving the associate degrees tonight. These students have completed a minimum of 60 hours of study composed of uh, biblical studies, professional studies, and general education studies, and four of them are with us tonight. Sherry Crawford. <laughs> Sherry plans to attend Liberty University to pursue a bachelor's and master's degree in psychology. Rachel Pace. <laughs> Rachel's plans after graduation are to further her education at Central by pursuing the Bachelor of Science in Christian Ministries and her TESOL certificate, so she will be well equipped for the mission field. <laughs> Shane Stotts. Shane plans to continue his education here at CCCB and pursue a Bachelor of Science in Biblical Ministry. <laughs> Josie Wetmore. <laughs> Josie is looking to pursue more education at a different school in order to be better equipped for achieving her dream of serving in the foster care ministries. Of the class of 2023, please stand. Before I officially confer your degree, I would like to charge you with these words, paraphrased and adapted from Paul's writings in 2 Timothy chapters 2 and 4. You have become our spiritual children. You have heard us teach many truths confirmed by the witness of God's word and his people. We urge you to be strong in the grace of Christ Jesus and teach faithful people those truths so they can train others. Of all those truths, always understand the importance of Christ's resurrection. This good news promises hope to you and the world. It is worth enduring anything and everything to bring God's truth to people and glory to Jesus Christ. Many who have faithfully served Christ Jesus have suffered, and even if you must join them, please be faithful. If you find yourself suffering for Christ, please remember these truths. If we die with him, we also live with him. If we endure with him, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we or anyone else becomes faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. On the day your earthly service ends and your heavenly life begins, be sure you can say these things. Like a soldier, I fought the good fight. Like an athlete, I finished the race. Like a farmer, I faithfully completed the harvest. And the crown of righteousness will be presented to you and everyone who looks forward to his appearance. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, the approval of the Board of Trustees, and the authority given to me by the Board of Trustees, it now gives me great pleasure as president of Central Christian College of the Bible to confer upon you your master's, bachelor's, or associate degree with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and obligations attached thereto. May God bless you and use you for his glory until we meet again in eternity. You may now move your tassels. You may be seated. <clears throat> you know, in the past year, Central has experienced a significant amount of transition and change. Whether you've been here as students for two years, four years, or more, you've seen new people fill different roles, create new programs, and revise policies. 
We've been through a merger with another school, an expansion program in another state, and renovated two of our three dorms. I feel like taking a deep breath or maybe a nap. Speaking of the merger, if you started at St. Louis Christian College and graduated tonight, will you please stand? Sometimes I fear that when students are forced to experience such drastic change as a, as a merger, it can derail their progress and discourage them from future ministry opportunities. Thank you for pressing through those changes and joining us here tonight and being part of the CCCV family. You may be seated. Life and ministry are constantly full of change. The sooner you can observe mature Christian leaders tackle those challenges, the better you can imagine yourselves handling your own difficult situations. Big problems in this world require gifted leaders who are willing to involve others and see things through to the end. You have observed such resilience and commitment in your time here at CCCB through your classmates and others who have set that example. And in the middle of all those changes, the college went through its accreditation review cycle. That included preparations for the past two to three years, a site visit as this school year started, and waiting patiently for the result. Well, tonight we can celebrate the successful reaffirmation of Central's accreditation through 2033. So that's good news. Graduates, I want to thank you for your patience and compliance through all the meetings, assessments, documents that were needed to make that happen. A group of very dedicated workers came together to make tremendous progress and complete that project. But tonight I want you to help me thank one specific person who accepted the leadership mantle during this challenging season. Tonight, Sean Lindsay is finishing his first full year as VP of Academics. Today, he experienced his first honors chapel and commencement tonight. He's worked with a devoted team of faculty and staff to plan the improvement and implementation of Central's institutional plan within the academic department and across other departments as well. He led the team that successfully completed the accreditation process within the first few months of his tenure here. And his agenda for the coming year promises to bring a new level of access, quality, and options to CCCB. But for now, would you please join me as we offer our appreciation to Sean Lindsay for the first of what I hope are many great years of accomplished service. And I want to personally thank the class of 2023 for bringing joy to everyone here as we endure whatever hardships come for the benefit of your education and future service. You are worth it as members of the body of Christ. The temporary difficulties of this earth pale in comparison to the eternal fruit of your future service. Thank you all for being here tonight to join in this celebration of this class's accomplishments. Our benediction will be worded by our class order, Matthew Blackmore, who will come now. Following the benediction, please remain standing for the recessional. When the music ends, the graduates will be lined around the room, symbolizing how tonight we are sending them out to serve around the world. Please stand for prayer. If you'll pray with me. Dear God, I want to thank you for tonight and seeing us all through the struggles, both personal and education, to get us here today to graduate. And please be with all of us graduating as we move on to our, to our next steps in life, whether that's continued education or straight into the ministry or whatever you have planned for us. We know you will be with us and see us through the struggles and help us remember that our hope is in you. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. 